we're here with Molly Ware, and uh, we're going to talk some about summer paddle. Uh, it seems that she has a good deal of experience with it, and we'd like to hear about it. Well, my experience with summer paddle, which I gather is doing very well now, yes, it is, uh, was in Nova Scotia, um, Canada, and. Um, my family, my relatives had a summer place in Nova Scotia, uh, south of Yarmouth, and uh, built the first farm paddle tennis court. And so we used to go up in the summertime, spent, pack up the steamer trunks, huge trunks, and spend the whole summer up there. But now people don't go up for a whole uh, long time, but every summer we play paddle. So I knew all about summer paddle tennis playing, but we didn't have any special ball the way I gather you have now. So you could play well in the summertime, and I think it's wonderful to have a great uh, group doing it in, in this area. My father, Fezzanin Blanchard, that's an unusual name, but he was called Fez or Fezzy, uh, lived next door to Jimmy Cogswell in Edgemont, part of sort of Scarsdale. And in 1928, they got, they wanted something interesting to do in the wintertime. And they built a, a wooden platform in the Cogswell's backyard and thought they might play deck tennis or something like that. Well, that didn't work out too well. Jimmy Cogswell went into the city and found a box um, with a little wooden racket, square wooden racket this big and a sponge rubber ball and a net. He came home all excited and they thought, heck with this uh, badminton or deck tennis or whatever, let's try hitting the ball over the net. Well, this was lovely, except for the fact it was on a hill, and the balls would roll into Ardsley Road, and so up came a wire with chicken wire this, this big, and um, very informally put up three quarters of the way around the court. And the design of the court was, was kind of strange. They had to take uh, into, into consideration a rock which was sort of in the way, and they couldn't make it quite the size they wanted to. Anyway, up went the chicken wire, and um, the balls would not go into the into the, into the uh, road. But I think this is apocryphal. Joe Rogers tell me this is apocryphal. It really didn't happen this way, but I like to think this is the way it did happen, that a ball got stuck in the chicken wire. My father ran quickly around to the outside of the court, blank with the ball <laughs> over the net. He ran back in and said it's, we're still playing. Well, balls I think playing. that's made balls up. I hate to think, but I think that's made up. I think what they finally decided to do is um, the, wa the wires were so, the court was made, they made it a little bigger the second time around, they built a second court. And it was a little further, the wires a little further back. They ended up getting small gauge wire. They got a fellow named, um, oh good Lord, Donald Evans, who invented how to work the backstop oh. to make it taut and get a reliable bounce off it. But this is sort of the history of how things began. And, um, there are pictures of me, you know, this high, walking around. I was born in 1926, and the first court was 1928. Oh, right. So I was pretty Tyler. young when the first court came, but I grew up playing on, on these courts. And it was great fun on weekends. It was very special because a group called the Old Army Athletes was founded, the court being uh, officially on the Cogswell property, who lived in uh, Old Army Road in Scarsdale. And weekends, the benches would be filled with people watching <coughs> and watching paddle and taking turns playing. And I got a picture of me sitting in my mother's lap with a bear, big bearskin rug, which I still <laughs> have, I think, watching the still paddle. Warm. And then we would go uh, after the games, um, everyone cheering and clapping. And this was sometimes the, the balls would end up in our laps because the wire didn't go all the way around the court in the early days. But after uh, an afternoon of playing, we'd go to the Cogswells play step away their house for, for tea. And it was just a, a very nice uh, nice atmosphere to grow up in. My father was, was uh, uh, a big promoter of the game. Jimmy Cosby was very mechanical and, and knew uh, just how to make the court and, okay. and design it. He, my father was, he put a light bulb in well, that was really good. <laughs> but he was a tremendous promoter of the game and did a lot of publicity for it and wrote letters to all sorts of people, too, in the President of the United States, I mean, for goodness sakes. And uh, Walter Lippmann was a classmate of his at Harvard and you know, all sorts of people he would get after to get involved in the game. And it was, um, he was the promoter of it, but I can't tell you exactly precisely which court came next after our court. <laughs> it doesn't matter how old you are, get out and play paddle. It's fun and, and easy. If you're not terrific, you can still have a lot of fun with the game, and it's just a great sport to get involved with. Amen. That's it, right there. Thank you so much. Oh, it's so <laughs>